Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's take up the daily quiz for today. The first question. How did the Defense Production Act of United States affect India during the pandemic? US violated India's exclusive economic zone under its provisions. US raised the prices of defense exports to India. US placed export controls on raw materials for COVID-19 vaccines. The US withdrew from joint defense production projects with India. Among the given options, the correct answer is option C. It is under this act that the United States has placed a set of export controls on raw materials related to COVID-19 vaccines. This has directly affected the production of vaccines in India by the Serum Institute. This question was taken up because we find a reference to this in this article in the Hindu. According to the article, the United States has decided to allow India access to vaccine raw materials following a conversation between the two national security advisers. Let's look at the second question. Which of the following statements are correct? Compulsory licensing is when a government allows someone else to produce a patented product or process without the consent of the patent owner or plans to use the patent protected invention itself. It is one of the flexibilities in the field of patent protection included in the WTO's agreement on intellectual property that is the TRIPS. When a compulsory license is issued, the patent owner loses rights over the patent and need not be compensated for the copies of the products that are made under the compulsory license. Among the given statements, the third statement is incorrect. So option B is the right answer. See, under the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights agreement of the WTO, a flexibility has been provided known as compulsory licensing. This allows a government to authorize a third party manufacturer to produce a patented product or a process without even obtaining the consent of the patent owner. This provision has been provided to help countries deal with emergencies, especially public health emergencies, where they can issue a compulsory license to authorize domestic companies to produce generic drugs in the interest of ensuring access to essential patented drugs, which otherwise would be very expensive. But however, just because a government has issued a compulsory license doesn't mean that the patent owner loses their patent rights. Even after a compulsory license is issued, the patent owner retains his patent right and the patent owner will have to be compensated by the third party company which has been authorized by the government to make copies of the products under the compulsory license that it has granted. So this is what makes the third statement incorrect. So option B is the right answer. This question on compulsory licensing was taken up because according to this article in the Hindu, just like the United States, even Russia is flying in aid and relief material to India to help the country combat the second wave of the pandemic. Russia is planning to send in essential items such as oxygen generators, concentrators and other essential medicines, but it won't be able to send the Remdesivir drug to India because Remdesivir is a patented drug in the United States and Russia has used a compulsory license as per the WTO to meet its domestic demand for Remdesivir. But however, the WTO norms prohibits Russia from exporting it to a third country like India. Let's move on to the third question. Which of the following statements are correct? The National Cybercrime Reporting Portal has been set up under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology to allow the reporting of cybercrimes. Indian Cybercrime Coordination Center or I4C has been established under the Ministry of Home Affairs to act as a nodal point in the fight against cybercrime. I4C has envisaged the Cybercrime Volunteers program to bring together citizen volunteers on a single platform to help them contribute to the fight against cybercrime by flagging any unlawful content for facilitating law enforcement agencies. Amongst the given statements, the first statement is incorrect. So option C is the right answer. See, the National Cybercrime Reporting Portal has been set up under the Ministry of Home Affairs to fight cybercrime and not under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Then under the MHA itself, the I4C has been set up to act as the nodal point in the fight against cybercrime by promoting coordination amongst all stakeholders, including the private industry, the academia, the government and the citizens. Through the I4C, 
Recently, a program has been launched by the Home Ministry known as the Cybercrime Volunteers Program. Under this program, citizens can volunteer to help the government in flagging any unlawful content on the internet, especially on social media platforms, which will help the law enforcement agencies to tackle cyber crimes and fake news. But however, this program has generated a lot of controversy because by enabling a few group of volunteers to report against other citizens, the government is creating a ground for the misuse of these provisions through which freedom of speech and expression under Article 19 can be curbed and contained, thereby leading to the breach of fundamental rights of the citizens. This question was taken up because according to this article, the Union Home Ministry has said that it does not maintain a centralized list of volunteers who have been enrolled under the Cybercrime Volunteer Program. Let's look at the fourth question. Which of the following statements are incorrect? India has procured the C-17 Globe Master from the United States. It is manufactured by Boeing. It is a large military transport aircraft used for tactical and strategic airlift missions to transport troops, cargo including heavy weaponry, medical evacuation and airdrop duties. All the three statements are correct with regard to the C-17 Globe Master. So option D is the right answer because the question is asking you to identify the incorrect statements. This question was taken up because we have an article in the Hindu which depicts the C-17 Globe Master which is operated by the Indian Air Force which has airlifted cryogenic oxygen containers from Singapore. This is a large military transport aircraft that India has procured from the United States and it is manufactured by Boeing. It is used for both tactical and strategic airlift operations and it can not only transport troops but it can even transport heavy weaponry including helicopters, fighter jets, battle tanks, artillery guns, etc. During peacetime, the aircraft is very very useful for humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations especially to carry out medical evacuation and to airlift essential supplies. Let's look at the fifth question. The deep time project that aimed at studying how people adapt to extreme changes in living conditions and environment caused by isolation and darkness was held recently in which country? Switzerland, France, United States, Germany. The correct answer is option B, France. This question was taken up because we have an article in the Hindu that makes a reference to the deep time project. Under this project, a group of 15 volunteers spent around 40 days in complete isolation and darkness within the Lombrives cave which is located in southwestern France. The idea was to expose a group of people to extreme living conditions and environment where they wouldn't carry any clocks, light or mobile phones and essentially the volunteers lose track of time. In total these volunteers have spent around 40 days under these conditions and as expected they did lose track of time. During the course of the project, scientists have collected valuable data which will be helpful in understanding as to how people adapt to extreme changes in living conditions and environment. Now let's take up a question from the 2020 prelims paper. Siachen Glacier is situated to the east of Aksaichin, east of Leh, north of Gilgit, north of Nubra Valley. The correct answer is option D. You can answer such map-based questions by being familiar with the geography and terrain of important locations. See, the Siachen Glacier is located over here. And as you can clearly see, the Gilgit-Baltistan region, which is under Pakistani occupation, lies to the west of Siachen. Then Aksaichin, which is under Chinese occupation, lies to the east of Siachen. And Leh is located to the south of Siachen. And the Nubra Valley is also located to the south of Siachen. So amongst the given options, we can clearly say that option D is the right answer. Now coming to the fact of the day, let's look at this article in the Hindu and understand something about the Armenian genocide. See, this topic is in news because recently US President Joe Biden has officially recognized the mass killings of Armenians by the Ottoman Turks back in 1915-1916 as an act of genocide. It is estimated that up to 1.5 million Armenians were killed during the early stages of the First World War as a result of the atrocities that were committed by the then Ottoman Empire. 
So let's understand what is a genocide and what atrocities were inflicted on the Armenians by the Ottoman Empire and how this has become a diplomatic issue between US and Turkey. See, genocide has been defined under Article 2 of the UN Convention on Genocide. It was adopted in 1948 and it refers to any planned state-sponsored attack against the people of a particular nation, ethnicity, race or religious group with the intention of destroying the entire group and such inhuman acts of mass killing is referred to as a genocide. This term was first coined in 1943 by a Polish lawyer known as Rafael Lemkin who was deeply affected by the atrocities that were committed against the Armenians by the Ottoman Turks and as well as by the killings of Jews by the Nazis. To describe these acts of mass violence targeted against a group, he coined the term genocide and eventually it led to the adoption of a UN Convention on Genocide which today has legal implications for any government which is involved in sponsoring acts of genocide. See, even before the First World War broke out in 1914, it was estimated that around 2 million Armenians were living in the Ottoman Empire. According to various studies, it has been estimated that four years after the World War ended, the Armenian population in the region had fallen to just around 387,000, thus indicating that around 1.5 million Armenians were possibly killed during the course of the war. Back in the Ottoman Empire, Armenians were largely found in the eastern fringes of the empire where today the country of Armenia is located. The Ottoman Turks unleashed Turkish and Kurdish militias upon them and lakhs of innocent Armenians were killed and many were even deported from today's Turkey to concentration camps that were located in the Syrian steppes. See, the Armenians became a target of the Ottoman Empire because of the ongoing great power game in the region during the late 19th and 20th centuries. During this period, the Ottoman Empire was on the decline and they always viewed the minority Armenians with suspicion. Then in 1877-78, during the Russia-Turkish War, the Ottoman Empire lost the conflict and from here onwards, resentment started building up against the minority Armenians. Following the defeat of the Ottomans in this war, the Treaty of Berlin was signed, where big powers led by Russia dictated terms to the Ottomans and they even brought pressure on the Ottoman rulers to initiate reforms to guarantee the security of Armenian minority against the Circassians and Kurds and also to work towards their welfare. The Ottomans saw this as a tie-up between the Armenian minority and its primary rival Russia and the Ottomans perceived the Armenians to be assisting Russia in weakening and defeating the Ottoman Empire. Following the start of resentment, a series of state-sponsored attacks took place against the Armenians which were primarily carried out by Turkish and Kurdish militias. Then in 1908, Turkish nationalist movement was on the rise and young Turks, they captured power from the Sultan and in their blind nationalistic attempt to restore the so-called imperial glory, they turned Turkey into a more inward-looking country which was dominated by the majority Turks and they would go on to target all the ethnic minorities, including the Armenians. Then as the First World War broke out in 1914, Turkey joined the Axis powers on the side of Germany and in the Caucasus region, it fought against the Russians, which it saw as their primary geopolitical rival. In this conflict against the Russians, who were on the side of Allied powers, the Ottomans suffered a catastrophic defeat in the Battle of Sari Kamish and the Ottomans conveniently blamed this defeat on Armenian treachery. They blamed the Armenian minority for backing Russia's invasion and following these allegations, they unleashed a wave of violence against the Armenian minority. First, the Armenians within the Ottoman army were executed brutally and then the Ottoman government authorized the arrest and execution of hundreds of Armenian intellectuals and community leaders on the 24th of April and this day is marked even today as the Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. That is the reason why the topic is in news currently. Following this brutal violence against the Armenians, the Ottomans feared that the other Armenians in eastern parts of today's Turkey would join the Russians and hence to target them, a legislation was passed which would allow their deportation to desert areas in the Syria region. As a result of this law, lakhs of Armenians were forcefully shifted 
into the desert and mountainous areas of today's Syria, where most of the Armenians died due to hunger and starvation. So since several decades, there has been a growing call to declare these atrocities as a genocide that was committed by the Ottomans against the Armenians. And recently in 2019, the US Congress had passed a resolution declaring this as an act of genocide. But this resolution of the US Congress was not supported by then President Donald Trump because that would have triggered Turkey and it would have affected US relations with Turkey. For the US, Turkey is a key ally and it is also part of the NATO grouping. But on the occasion of this year's Remembrance Day, US President Joe Biden has decided to officially acknowledge this atrocity as an act of genocide. So with this, let's conclude our discussion for today. Thanks for watching.